Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for, as for my topic, I would like to share our understanding about how the technologies should be essentially thinking to boost the 5G new business. So from uh, this diagram, you will see that uh, uh, in 5G era, we have, I think, imagined or planned a lot of new uh, applications like AI, IoT, AR, VR, etc. But we believe that for 5G, the network is designed to uh, be open and flatter to serve all the vertical industries, not only those individual, uh, individual personals. So you, you will see uh, in the past, uh, in the 2G area, if you got a license of telecom service provider, it will be easy to make money in 3G. Uh, that relies on the value added services. In 4G, it relies on the uh, better user experience. But in 5G, it's not enough. You must have to think about how to use the innovative application as well as the innovative business model. So for um, preparing the upcoming 5G, what we can do? Uh, the te technology preparation. This is what we have summarized. Uh, just to, to easily remember, we take it as A, B, C, D, like alphabet, okay? Here A stands for um, artificial intelligence. B stands for big data. C, of course, for cloud. Um, D here, it's a device, sometimes we call it terminal, and means, uh, E means uh, edge computing. Okay, later I will break down one by one. The first one is uh, about uh, AI. I think uh, the artificial, uh, artificial intelligence bring us a lot of uh, imaginations. So from the intelligent speakers, now to the uh, drones, to the autopilot, the AI is coming closer and closer to our daily life, but uh, um, it's for the telecom, we have to think about how we can uh, step into that. To some extent, as my view, uh, we think the, um, uh, here we, we think for telecom uh, operators, we can do two type of things. The first one is you can use the leverage the AI technologies to do the network intelligence, like the uh, fault analysis, deep analysis, like the risk uh, uh, prediction, like the even the automatic site survey. In another time, we in another layer we can do it to uh, leverage the industry intelligence, like we see here the voice assistant the intelligent smart home, uh, intelligent household, as well as the uh, smart attendant as we used for IPCC. So for AI point, we have been prepared to our customer or to the industry in two layers as well. One is in the network layer. Here we have a softcom AI. Our target is to try to make the network can do a uh, self-healing, self-operation, and also uh, self-monitor uh, uh, like that. And uh, in the uh, application layer or the platform layer, we have a full-stack AI-based cloud solution. We call it Fusion Cloud EI, Enterprise Intelligence. It, it includes two parts. The first one is the, the uh, hardware part. This is mostly around about the heterogeneous computing like the CPU, GPU, MPU, even FPGA computing. We call it smart computing platform. Uh, another brand new name is Atlas. We have officially released this year in 2018 MWC. Another layer is the AI open platform. You see here we, uh, this platform is open and it can load the mainstream industry AI uh, Frameworks like the TensorFlow, like the uh, like the MXNet, or even Cafe. So we have pre-integrated some basic uh, basic accuracy of them uh, for our customer to leverage, and we have already applied them in different scenarios and even industries. So this is for AI. 
As for um, big data, we know now that a lot of terminals has been connected to the uh, network, so uh, the data explosion is very common now. So uh, for our understanding that the data should be unified, centralized, and open as a service to be accessed, okay? So for the uh, telecom industry, we found that the biggest challenge is the ROI. Uh, we have been asked by one of our customers that uh, he has invested a lot, around 1,200 nodes for his big data platform, but he asked us what he can do because he see a very low return on that. So uh, our answer lies in uh, three Technically, the first one is that we say, you must have to think about consolidate a real big data. Sometimes it may be terabyte level or even larger. And the second point is um, uh, you have to think about uh, opening the service to, for everybody can, can access in API existing. The last point is about the um, um, uh, easy to use. We found that in the telecom industry, around 70% of database is SQL Server based. So uh, we built a SQL SQL engine for everybody to use because usually a lot of engineers in telecom industry are very familiar with that. So we think this is, will be very, very convenient for everybody to use. As for cloud, um, I think uh, a lot of people have already talked about uh, we also found a lot of customers had already multi-cloud strategy. Here, I just want to say, um, uh, most of people are thinking about how to schedule or allocate different type of resources from different cloud. But uh, uh, what I want to say is that you should think about how to leverage the cloud business model to change your business process. At the same time, leverage the cloud technology to accelerate the application, the service, time to market. So this is the most important. The second point is about the IT and the CT. Sometimes uh, most people believe that they cannot be converted, but uh, if you think about the, uh, even though they have different requirements for the infrastructure about reliability, availability, as well as performance, but uh, if you think about the service provisioning, they, sh they, they could be the same. And you just need to think about a way to isolate them. So this is uh, about cloud. Uh, another case happened in uh, China Mobile uh, Shanxi branch, and we have them build a convert cloud for um, BSS domain, OSS domain, as well as MS domain. And here, uh, we also found that the common challenge for many of our customer, um, the organization issue. So you see here, we, we, we cannot put their NFV applications here because that is totally uh, undercover by another department. And uh, in a short time, it cannot be merged, okay? So for um, device, I think uh, we have to thank to the development of uh, chipset as well as many other innovative uh, technologies. Now we have a lot of type of terminals uh, connected to the uh, cloud. Um, <clears throat> I have to say, um, uh, video like smart home, uh, IoT, AR, VR is um, very, very uh, popular for uh, almost every telecom service provider. And uh, uh, the only way, the only thing you need to think about is how to, where to uh, step into or start to engage with the, business, uh, with the customer. And uh, we found that terminal is very, very crucial, uh, crucial here because it is the user access point. At the same time, it is the source of data generated. So if you want to develop the IoT business, you have to think about how to uh, uh, build a terminal-based uh, business model as well as your echo, uh, technical ecosystem. So here we have a case. Uh, it's not about IoT, it's IOC, Internet of Calls. And uh, we, do it, we do it with China Telecom, uh, with a milk company in China. You know, here, 
um, to improve the production of the milk of each cow, they put a terminal to the uh, neck of the cow, and it can monitor the status of the uh, of every cow. Okay, particularly for the period of esters. You know, the only way you you, you, you can improve the production of the milk is to uh, not miss any estrus period to make it pregnant. So by, so by this way, our customer can precisely monitor the status of the cow and uh, almost not uh, miss any period here. So for each cow, each year, it can improve the uh, revenue about, about the milk is uh, 2,200 RMB, that's around 300 US dollar per year. Um, another case is uh, what we are doing uh, internally. You know, we have a lot of local office in the global world. That's around uh, more than 100. So we use the telepresence uh, every day, every night, uh, globally. And uh, this kind of system can uh, do a very efficient operation because it can, like, it can uh, make the mini nodes uh, automatically by TTS, and it can also help you to locate people according to the sound source direction. So it's like you are in the rear meeting room, even they are thousand miles away. Okay, this is another case about IoT. So as for uh, edge computing, I just uh, take this page to show what is uh, understanding about that in the future. Sh everything should be sensed, connected, and be uh, intelligent. Either uh, human beings, either the maybe animals, or some machines, or some any kinds of other terminals. So for um, edge computing, we think it has uh, three typical characters. The first one is uh, intelligence. Um, here we have a case in uh, camera. You know, now many of the countries are building their own safe city projects. And uh, uh, for camera, if it is intelligent, it can change the uh, short model automatically according to the weather conditions. It's daylight or night or uh, froggy or raining like that, and to make sure the picture it can take very, very clearly. And uh, we also uh, help many customers build the uh, camera in the streets, in the t downtowns like that. If you put some intelligent software in the edge side of the network, like the uh, facial recognition software, like the car license play, uh, plate recognition software, the camera has the capability of uh, real-time recognition, like uh, people or car. This is the first one. The second one is about the um, self-administration uh, or self-evolution. Uh, uh, Here we have a case in the, uh, in the car, we call it MDC, and also the elevator case. That means, uh, according to the daily operation or running information, the car or even the elevator have the self-healing capabilities or uh, self-evolution capabilities to make it more uh, smart. And the last one is um, happened in the uh, automobile industry. Actually, the PSA group, they have put their uh, IoT platform totally on Huawei Public Cloud. And uh, uh, it is very, very um, important in, in automobile industry because that by this way, they can monitor all of their cars that shipped out, that run in the road, or even parking in the, in the park. So um, this is a very, very big shift for them to change from a, a legacy automobile manufacturing vendor to a transport service provider. So um, just as a summary, I think we can do uh, five aspects of preparation for the upcoming 5G. Uh, artificial intelligence for a network and industry intelligence. The big data for multimodal analysis engine and data lakes. The cloud-based 
us or even pass or thus convergence a variety of services. Um, device intelligent and massive deployment. The last one is about the uh, edge intelligence. So um, just uh, one more thing uh, before I end up, I just put extra page here uh, about the ecosystem. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, in, in 5G era, the telecom service provider must uh, uh, how to say, serve the different vertical uh, industries. But uh, mostly, uh, some vendors are very professional in the, in the cloud side, in the infrastructure side, in the hardware side, as well as some ISVs are very, very dominant in the software side, application side. So uh, this diagram shows our strategy how we do the uh, ecosystem for the whole cloud or even for the whole IT. Uh, unified us, uh, pass, and even big data and AI services we take the uh, open source strategy and we make the uh, deep cooperation with those mainstream ISV partners in the industry. So we think, uh, we, we hope this kind of strategy can bring us our customer a, a better, a, a more benefit when they doing the uh, cloud transformation. That is almost all about my presentation. Thank you.